Hey guys, Zana here, and today what I'm going to do is review Linux Mint KDE Edition. Now, like I said, this is KDE, and this is from the same guys who produced Linux Mint, except it's just KDE. And what I'm going to do is give my personal opinion on this desktop operating system, and how I like it, how it works, and yeah. I'm not really going to do branches I'm just gonna, this is gonna be random, kind of, in the order I review this stuff. So, yeah. Let's get started. First off, I'm gonna talk about the cu the customization of the desktop. First off, what I like about this operating system is that, off the bat, it comes with its own uh, slideshow uh, feature. You don't have to download anything like Walch or anything like that. You can actually literally choose your uh, wallpaper and make it as a slideshow. Also, it comes with another number of different wallpapers and stuff like that, as well as a, a couple other cool desktop wallpaper-ish uh, effects. Like here is the globe. You can once you press apply, it actually changes your desktop background into the globe. And you can drag it and actually view parts of the Earth, and you could probably zoom in places. It's kind of like Google Max, Maps, except it's a desktop wallpaper. Yep. Uh, next, let's see. You can also arrange how your desktop looks. I'm not messing with that, and I really have no need to. Let's see. So I'm gonna change this back to image. No, not image. Yeah. This actually comes pre pre-packaged with a lot of cool wallpapers like look at all these they're pretty they're very very pretty yep next uh, slideshow apply there we go and then what, uh, what you can also do is de uh, customize the borders and stuff of your desktop by simply going to this little start menu uh, let's see computer system settings workspace appearance now here is where you can customize the borders the cursors the text and a couple other things let's see first off let's start with the decorations now these you can also download more and what these are are basically the customization of the shell and yeah it makes it's kind of like Firefox in a way, and it's kind of like the advanced settings it, when you download it from the software center. It basically gives you more customization options of your uh, window borders and font and other stuff like that. Here you can also get more cursors and change it. And then here's the, the here's the actual desktop theme. You can change it to how the uh, t it's kind of how should I put this um. This is where you can change how, what the effect looks like. Like you know, down here the taskbar, how it looks, how it's on oxygen. You can also change it to air, make it look a little bit lighter, and then air for netbooks to save power. I guess I don't know. I'm still kind of new to this, so bear with me. And then we have splash screen. Now, what splash screen is? Let's see, it's the screen after you log in. Once you press enter, when you're done entering your password, it's the screen that lets you know that it's loading your personal settings, basically. You can choose a different screen, and they're animated in their own little way. Like this one I downloaded from the Get New Themes, and the newest, this was on there. This is the red, what's that? Red Chilini KGE. It's an animated desk splash screen. Basically, it animates this, then this, then it writes this and scribbles on the bottom, which is kind of cool. This is one of the, those extra things you can do with KDE. It's a little bit more customiz customizable than GNOME, especially Ubuntu, and I think a little bit more Linux Mint. Unlike Linux Mint Regular Edition, this comes with its own slideshow program which I really like let's see uh, how do I get out of here fuck hold on uh, I can't see there we go also as you may notice there are widgets and you can add more by right clicking and pressing add widgets and you have a lot of widgets to start off with like the battery monitor 
uh, device manager, CPU monitor, you know, geeky type of stuff. Also, you have your logout, login, uh, media player, etc., etc. Widgets that you would normally find a lot better from a lot better than Windows and faster and less power consuming. Let's see. Also, with your desktop customization, you can add icons. These are short. These are not actually launchers. These are literally icons. You cannot really put anything on the desktop aside from folders. And by the, and sometimes the folders are actually shortcuts too. I'll I'll get back to that in a minute. That's actually part of the whole desktop interface in itself. Next, let's look at the taskbar down here. As you may notice, this looks almost like the Windows taskbar. Actually, this actually this came first before the Windows taskbar or the superbar or whatever you want to fuck to call it. As you may notice, you can pin stuff to the desktop. Uh, ah, you can pin stuff to the taskbar. Like, uh, let's see. If it's under your applications, you basically right-click it, add it to the panel or the desktop. And the panel would be this, and the desktop would be that. And it's just a one-click, and then there you go. It launches. And also, here are your notifications. The calendar, Wi-Fi, sound, clipboard, which has all your copy and paste stuff. And also, like Linux Mint, regular edition, this has the little shield where your updates are at. The message center and your other notifications which is not working for whatever reason and then you can also take the panel and move it to wherever the hell you want like the top which is where I had it before I even made this video and the new activity gives you a new panel and you can add as much as you want I think the max is four I don't know don't quote me on that and then here's a little notification thing here too battery monitor device notifier etc etc I like this bar a lot better than Windows because it has a lot more action. You can do a lot more stuff with it, and it's a lot more simple and it's bigger to read. Let's see. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about. Well, let's get to this too. Uh, here is what looks like the start menu from Windows, and let's see. I think these guys copied off from Microsoft. I'm not totally sure. Don't quote me on that. Off the bat, you have a lot of favorites to begin with. This uh, this comes built in with Firefox, LibreOffice, uh, and a, a couple other things that I installed, like uh, Media Player. It starts with an A. And then uh, another chat client, which sucks balls, so I got Epaphany back, as you probably saw. And then here's your my computer type-ish uh, menu. It has uh, software center, system settings, synaptic package manager, terminal, command run, home, network, root, terminal. And then here's your recently used files. And then here's your leave where you can shut down the computer and, sh and crap like that. Alright, next, uh, let's get to the interface of this operating system. Now, this works a little bit different than what you're used to if anybody's switching from uh, Ubuntu GNOME or Linux Mint GNOME or any no other GNOME type of operating system. This is completely different because, let's say if you're plugging in a mass storage device and you want to move it to your desktop, well, that's not going to happen because for whatever reason... When you drag and drop a folder to your desktop, it counts as, as a shortcut. So what you have to do, and I'm re I really mean this, what you have to do is open up your home folder, and wh wherever you want to drop those folders, you drop them in the home folder or one of these folders. I honestly have no idea how to make it so that the folders from your mass storage device are actually folders on your desktop and not shortcuts other than dragging all the files in there but it's more convenient the other way I just mentioned and also like any other Linux interface you also have the choice of uh, grabbing stuff from your hard drive it mounts uh, your Windows partition or any other partition you have over there and as normal it, you would also see any devices over here that would be plugged in yep 
Uh, that's about it. This comes built in with Adobe Flash, none of that free crap. And this also comes with Java, that's how I'm running Screencast-O-Matic so well. And, let's see, that's about it. Flaws I have with this operating system. Now, off the bat, it does not connect to your Wi-Fi automatically. So what you have to do until you get it to connect automatically is to click the Wi-Fi indicator, click your Wi-Fi, enter in your password, password, which it will remember. You just have to click it. Actually, you know what? Here's what you basically have to do to make everything automatic. Like every time you shut down and boot up your computer, or log off or log on, you, it will not connect to your Wi-Fi for whatever reason. So what you have to do is right click, go to network management s settings, and then you go to edit. If you click your, yeah, you know what, let's just do this real quick since I don't care. Um, under wireless security, it would give you the option to uh, remember your password and connect it automatically. This is where you have to turn on the setting. It doesn't automatically set itself, or it doesn't give you the option on this simple little notification screen right here. For whatever reason, I really don't know. Let's see, that's basically the only flaw I have with this operating system. To nitpick, the other one would be the file management system, but honestly, I think it keeps me a little bit more organized, unlike uh, other operating systems. So, I give this operating system a 8.5 out of 10. You know what? No, fuck that. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for my personal opinion. The one point missing is that little uh, issue I had with the Wi-Fi, like I just mentioned. Other than that, it's a sma it's a snappy operating system. It's really fast. It doesn't take up that much RAM, and compared to other operating systems like uh, Ubuntu and Linux Mint Regular Edition, this does not make my fans go blaring, like you may have heard in previous videos. I'm not totally sure. Other than that, it comes with the software center, the same Linux Mint software center. Uh, yeah, that's about it. There's nothing much else I can explain or talk about because everything everything you probably are seeing this video about has already been mentioned in other videos people have made. So yes, I will see you guys later and enjoy your Linux Mint.